Hello, welcome to Goals of Care Discussions for Caregivers of COVID-19 Patients, Support for Pediatric Patients, Opportunities for Nurses to Provide Best Practices at the Bedside. My name is Dr. Cheryl Thaxton and I'm part of the National LNEC faculty. Objectives are listed clearly here, where we'll review the current findings related to pediatric patients impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, discuss the role of the bedside nurse in goals of care discussions during the COVID-19 pandemic in caring for pediatric patients. Finally, we'll discuss communication strategies to provide optimal emotional support for families and to pr promote best practices. Here's a case study that may sound familiar. JH is an 11 year old female admitted to the pediatric intensive care unit for fever, cough, rash, abdominal pain, diarrhea, found to have an acute kidney injury, and she tested positive for COVID-19. Her parents are distraught about the findings and they're also worried about her past medical history of congenital heart disease as an infant. The, the PICU team has plans to update the family about her status and the family is ready for the video call. Where does the bedside nurse begin with providing support for this family? What do we know so far about pediatric patients as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, as of September 2020, roughly 10% of COVID-19 cases in the U.S. are among children. Hospitalization among children is low as compared to adults. However, the numbers continue to increase. Current guidelines. Some children with COVID-19 develop multi-system inflammatory syndrome, a rare but serious inflammatory condition linked to COVID-19, characterized by fever, inflammation, multi-systems organ dysfunction. Here we've listed some clinicians who should be part in the multidisciplinary approach. Additional AAP information is here on the list, the link below the slide. What is different for families of pediatric patients when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, the COVID-19 illness has caused anxiety related to separation from normal activities. So children are not in school, some children are not in school, they're not participating in regular sports activities or community groups with friends. So that decrease has impacted the emotional stability for some families and children. There's limited contact with support systems and extended family. Children may have a concern of spreading illness to family members. Hospitalized children may experience separation from family members who are unable to visit. Settings for goals of care discussions. Given current hospital visitation restrictions, nurses can advocate for creating adequate settings for family meetings to take place. We've listed some possible options for communicating with family here. Of the utmost importance is that these options are utilized as permitted only by institutional protocols. Key questions to consider before the meeting. What is the meaning of illness to the family and also to the patient? What is the family's prior experience with sickness and death? Have they lost a recent family member due to COVID or in the past? Has the child experienced loss through loss of a pet? A pet? How does the family typically communicate difficult news? Are there other team members who should be included in the video meeting phone call with the family? Tips for the discussion. 
Discuss the facts while paying attention to the family's emotional signals. If giving updates by phone, utilize pauses throughout the conversation to allow for questions. It also displays active empathy. It is okay to show expressions of emotion when speaking with families via video or by phone. Seek to partner with child life specialists and clinical social workers when possible. What and how to communicate. Turn off phones and pagers. Determine how much the child and family want to know. Assess the family's preferred style of communicating. How do they process difficult information? Do they take it in small parts, discuss, and then process before moving on? Utilize a language interpreter when needed. Establish an appropriate atmosphere. If meeting in person, have tissues available. Set the scene. We'll talk about that a bit more later. Utilize developmentally appropriate language for the child. Specific to the video call experience, ensure the least amount of background noise possible. Again, this is a serious time for the family. Um, hearing monitors loudly in the background or small group discussions amongst other nurses that include laughter can seem very insensitive. If possible, find a private space for the video call. Use empathetic language. I wish I had better news. Or another example, I wish things were different. Allow each family member present for the video call to introduce themselves. These calls can include extended family if the parents and caregivers permit. So you may see an uncle or godparent or even a spiritual support leader on these video calls. Prepare the family for difficult news and ask for permission to speak in front of siblings. Again, the point of the siblings is that if there's very sensitive information, um, the parents may need to have a second uh, discussion separate with the younger sibling to explain things and break it down. Or you can utilize the child life specialist. So here's an evidence-based protocol called the SPIKES protocol. Six steps for delivering bad news when preparing for uh, and participating in a family meeting. Setting up the discussion does include a lot of the things that we talked about earlier. Making sure you have the right room, the right time, the right people in the room, uh, the right equipment in the room in terms of tissues. Perception, assessing the patient's perception of the situation. So the patient and family by simply asking, what have the doctors been telling you about what's going on? Invitation, obtaining the patient's invitation for information about his or her diagnosis, prognosis, or details about their illness. Is it okay if I provide an update with you about what I know? And then knowledge, providing that education to the patient and family. Then emotions, addressing the patient's emotions with empathetic responses. So after you've given that education, expect emotional responses, facial expressions, but there's a need to ensure that you acknowledge the emotion. This must be frustrating. I can't imagine. This must be saddening. Summary, providing the opportunity for the patient and family to summarize their understanding of the discussion, decisions made, feelings about the meeting, and any questions or concerns. Very vital to do a summary. So what are the expectations of the healthcare provider? Families and patients want honesty. They want non-abandonment. For example, making sure that the new nurse coming on for next shift is introduced. Elicit values and goals. Help explore realistic options. Taking time to listen. The ask, tell, ask strategy. 
ensures that the interaction remains a conversation. So the nurse will ask open-ended questions to determine the needs of the patient. For example, what are you hoping for? After the patient responds, the nurse can address the response by telling information that answers the question to clarify the patient's understanding of the response or identify additional concerns of the patient. It sounds like you're hoping for a recovery that will get you back home and that you can leave tomorrow. However, I think the doctors are discussing that several other tests are needed. We can talk about what that means. Following the exchange, the nurse can ask another question to clarify the patient's understanding. It sounds like you're frustrated. What did you mean by, by being frustrated? Tell me more about that. Another communication tool is called the nurse communication tool. This is an evidence-based communication tool that assists the nurse to utilize verbal expressions of empathy. We'll break each communication word down. So naming, name the emotion, assures the patient of the nurse's recognition of his or her emotion. You seem really sad since the doctor talked with you this morning. Understand. Using words that communicate understanding normalizes the patient's emotion and a non-judgmental attitude is demonstrated. I can't imagine how you've been feeling, but it wouldn't surprise me if you were feeling sad right now. Respect. Communicating respect acknowledges the patient's ability to overcome some of the challenges of his or her life-limiting illness. I'm so impressed that you've been able to continue to participate in physical therapy, even though you said that you don't like it. Support. Using words that communicate support communicates the nurse's presence at that time and in the future, assuring the patient of non-abandonment. I know that you have been struggling with anxiety at night. We will continue to help work with you to control this problem. And finally, explore. The nurse can communicate empathy through words that explore his or her experience. Demonstrating an interest in the story of their experience allows the nurse to explore the patient's concerns. You said you were worried about your family through all of this. Can you tell me more about that? Helpful tips for talking with children. As stated earlier, child life specialists offer a great deal of resource and support to children of any age. Specifically, I'm able to address these very difficult situations. Use appropriate language for the developmental age of the child. Begin with a non-threatening topic. Perhaps they're painting at the bedside and you may mention that you, you observe what they're painting and ask them to talk about it. Listen actively and observe nonverbal cues as well. Ask the child what he or she knows, give valid choices, respect opinions, and allow time to plan. Listening with parents' ears helps us to understand. Here's a chart that, that displays what the healthcare provider may provide in terms of an update. And here's the other side of what parents may interpret or hear based on the statements. As you can see, it's very easy to make vague comments that can be misunderstood. Another comment that can be vague is called do everything. Do everything should be clarified because do everything also means providing comprehensive care that can be um, maintained throughout the illness trajectory 
and even into the end of life if that should happen. So pain management, symptom management, addressing physical and spiritual needs, these are ongoing support mechanisms throughout the trajectory. And this needs to be clarified with the parents and also times with the extended medical and nursing teams. Communicating with the patient and family. Uh, I think it's very difficult for families to hear. There's nothing more that we can do. As we stated on the previous slide, there's always more that can be done in terms of pain, symptoms, spiritual support, emotional support. Instead, another statement may be, if the medical and nursing teams cannot cure your child, then we can help to provide care to make him or her as comfortable as possible until death. Conclusion, the bedside nurse has a key role in assuring an appropriate and adequate goal setting discussions um, during COVID-19. The nurse should seek to partner with the child life specialists and social workers, and the nurse can implement evidence-based communication strategies to provide optimal emotional support for patients and families and to promote best practices. Thank you.